Hello, everyone. My name is Deanna Atai, and I am an Associate Clinical Professor of Surgery at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. And I am thrilled and honored to be here speaking with you today about going flat after mastectomy. And I have no financial decisions. Well, it's no surprise that there is an increase in mastectomy rates, um, both for cancer as well as in the prophylactic setting, as more and more individuals are undergoing hereditary breast cancer genetic testing. And along with that rise in mastectomy rates and possibly, possibly fueling that rise are increasing options for reconstruction. There are a lot of choices now, both implant-based and autologous or using one's own body tissue or a combination. And there are several studies that report patient reported outcomes showing that quality of life is improved among those who have reconstruction compared with those who do not. But many women do not want or cannot have reconstruction. Sometimes there are two factors that preclude reconstruction. For some women, their breasts are just not that important to them and having the reconstructive procedure is not something that they are interested in. And there are a growing number of going flat individual advocates, support groups, and advocacy organizations. And the National Cancer Institute has recently defined aesthetic flat closure and given it a formal definition on its, uh, in its dictionary of cancer terms. And aesthetic flat closure refers to a type of surgery that's done to rebuild the shape of the chest wall after one or both breasts are removed. And this can involve additional surgical procedures um, to make sure that there is as flat and as neat a closure as possible. Now, aesthetic flat closure can be performed at the time of the mastectomy and the breast surgeon may or may not enlist the services of a plastic surgeon for assistance, depending on how complicated the flat closure is anticipated to be. But aesthetic flat closure could also be done at a later point in time. For example, someone that has implant or autologous flap reconstruction may decide later to have the reconstruction removed or may need to have the reconstruction removed for various reasons. The recovery will depend really on the extent of the procedure and whether the flat closure is done at the time of mastectomy or whether it's done as a delayed procedure. And I think it's also important to note that just as with any other type of reconstructive surgery, it is a process, not a procedure. And it's not unusual that more than one surgery is needed to achieve the aesthetic flat closure results that are desired. And I'd like to highlight two recent publications um, and studies that really get to the patient perspective on uh, aesthetic flat closure and going flat. So the first study, uh, the senior author was Dr. Don Dizan, and this was published uh, last year. It was a social media survey of women who decided not to pursue reconstruction. The goals of the survey were to better understand the preoperative decision-making process, the interaction that patients had with their breast surgeons and their overall experiences. And really the credit to this study goes to an undergraduate student at Brown University, Colette Barr, who this was her idea. And she approached Dr. Dizon and some of his colleagues, and then they proceeded with the research study. So this was a Facebook survey. They developed an original survey and distributed it to two um, going flat Facebook groups, the Breast and the Sea and Flat and Fabulous. And the survey was designed with input from the moderators of these Facebook groups. And these are some of their results. You can see that the majority of the patients, the, the lighter colored bars are somewhat agree and strongly agree. So the majority of patients felt they were knowledgeable about their options, well informed about their options, that their doctors showed empathy, that they felt supported, and the overwhelming majority felt that they made a decision that was right for them. 
But I think one of the things that stood out to me in this work was while most felt that their doctors showed empathy regarding the decision-making, uh, when you add these three categories up, it's a little over 20 to 30 percent where they strongly or somewhat disagreed with that statement. And then they asked whether or not patients received educational materials to help them guide the decision making process. And about a little over 50% either did not receive materials or they weren't sure. It was only 44% that received some educational materials. And regarding whether or not they felt these materials were helpful, um, you know, it's kind of a mixed, kind of a mixed response there. And then they asked, did women seek out images of what the different surgical options would look like? And the overwhelming majority did seek out images um, and most felt that these images were very helpful in making the reconstructive decision and that they helped with acceptance of their own surgical outcome. And then some of the comments, the open-ended responses that patients um, provided in their, in their surveys, um, as far as their overall post-surgery satisfaction, um, a couple comments that really stood out to me is needing to push their provider to go flat, receiving different surgical results than agreed upon or expected, not, feel, not receiving information from the physician and having to research this on their own. Um, what do you wish your doctors had done differently? Provide flat as an option, provide images of realistic outcomes. And what should doctors know about the patient perspective listen to and trust your patients, and patients want to hear all of the options, including going flat. Patients are unique and expect differences. So the conclusions from this study were just under 40% of respondents felt supported. Most made the decision independently without a lot of support from their physicians. And there are not really good uh, decision aids. Many women had to go and search for information on their own. And that women want going flat discussed as an active option along with all of the reconstructive options, not as an afterthought. And so, a little bit inspired by Dr. Dizon's study and based on some of the conversations I was having with flat advocates, I uh, and some colleagues also embarked on a survey study. And some of the inspiration for this next uh, study was seeing many, many studies in the surgical literature showing that women who had reconstruction had better quality of life but then being exposed to many different advocates in the online space and in the social media space who were very, very happy with their decisions. And there just seemed to be a disconnect to me between what was being reported in the surgical literature and what I was seeing and hearing from the patients themselves. And in looking into it a little bit more deeply, what many of the surveys, uh, many of the studies that showed improved quality of life with reconstruction, what many of them had in common is they used a common um, patient reported outcome tool called the BreastQ. Now BreastQ has been used for a number of years, um, probably over 10 years now. It's been well validated and there are multiple modules. So there are modules for mastectomy alone, for mastectomy with reconstruction, for breast conserving surgery, and for monitoring of lymphedema. And all of the modules have questions about quality of life and satisfaction with various aspects of care. But in looking at the breast cue, some of the things, especially in regarding to the going flat population really struck me. First of all, the questions are asked with breast area in mind and someone who has gone flat may feel that they no longer have a breast area. 
So how do you necessarily, how do you answer the question if the question isn't worded in a way that actually makes a lot of sense to you? Um, one of the questions is how comfortably do you feel your bras fit? Well, maybe one of the perceived benefits of the surgery is never having to wear a bra again. So again, how do you answer this survey? There is no box for not applicable or an open-ended response or a comment. Some of the other questions in the past week, how often have you experienced, again, how often have you experienced difficulty sleeping, tightness, pulling, tenderness in your breast area? If you no longer feel you have a breast area, how do you answer these questions? And are your responses really accurate? Um, and again, with breast area in mind, um, and these are questions that are meant to assess psychosocial well-being. Um, and I think I, I just had some challenges with some of these questions. Do you feel of equal worth to other women, feminine in your clothes, um, like other women and attractive? Well, you know, again, for any of us, um, I think many of us work very, very hard to not um, have our own perception of well being influenced by how others look. And we, I think, all try very hard to just value ourselves for who we are and what are and, and how our bodies are. So these were some of the things that stuck out to me in looking at the breast cue and, and seeing how the surveys showed that women who went flat had poor quality of life. Maybe it wasn't the, a problem necessarily with the surgery. Maybe it was with just how the questions were being asked. So what we did was partnered with patient advocates and Dr. Dizan joined on this study as well. Uh, we partnered with patient advocates in the Going Flat community and we developed our own survey. Um, and we had, uh, just like Dr. Dizan and his colleagues did for theirs, we had input from the patients. Um, and I think that's an important point because if you're not asking the questions in a way that makes sense to the patients, then you may not get accurate results. And so we assessed reasons for going flat, factors associated with satisfaction. And one of the things that we had heard from a lot of the patients was this concept of flat denial, which includes the surgeon not initially discussing going flat, the surgeon actively discouraging going flat, or the procedure that was agreed upon was not performed. In other words, a woman woke up with excess skin and was told later that it was in case you change your mind. So the survey was designed with the input of four patient advocates. We distributed it over Facebook, Twitter, and other social media. We had it open only for one week because we were up against an abstract submission deadline, but we received 931 responses in just one week. So clearly a lot of women wanted to have their voices heard on this topic. And these are some of the reasons for going flat. The most common was to avoid a foreign body, lower health risk from the additional surgery, lower complication rate, um, shorter recovery, and avoid surgery on another body area. Almost 50, a little over 50% felt that their breasts were not important for their body image. Um, and these numbers don't all add up to 100 because uh, people were able to click as many options, uh, as many choices that applied to them. And then when we looked at questions about satisfaction after surgery, so pleased with the appearance of my chest, I feel confident about my body. Overall, I am satisfied with my surgical outcome. The darker shaded bars are somewhat and strongly agree. So the majority of respondents, um, and certainly as far as satisfied with outcome, the majority of respondents felt very happy with their outcome. Um, and these were questions about flat denial. My doctor performed the surgery we agree upon, offered the option to go flat, was supportive of going flat. And again, most strongly or somewhat agreed with these statements, but if you add up these last three shaded bars here, we're up to between 20 and 30% who experience some degree of flat denial. 
And this is kind of a summary slide of the outcomes. Um, overall, 22% experience some form of flat denial, either not being offered the option, the surgeon wasn't supportive, or the surgeon left additional skin. And these were some of the comments from the patients. Extra skin was left in case I changed my mind as if I didn't know what I wanted. I was told that going flat would be a mistake. I was never given the choice to go flat, like I was expected to have reconstruction. And there were many, 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 again, we had not over 900 responses, so many other comments similar to these. And our conclusions from this study were that 74% were satisfied with their decision. And this is very different than some of the other literature shows. But about 20% experienced some degree of flat denial. And predictors of satisfaction were support from the surgeon and receipt of adequate information. So tying back a little bit to the findings of Dr. Dizon's study. And so what are the next steps? Well, we clearly need resources for patients. We need areas where they can go to to see pictures of what it would look like. It's not enough anymore for the surgeon to say, well, it will look flat like a man's chest without a nipple. That's not what a woman wants to hear. So I am working with a group of advocates and other surgeons, and there is under development a photo gallery. Uh, Kim Bowles, the um, force behind not putting on a shirt, is spearheading this effort. Um, so a photo gallery, a place where women can go and see pictures of others who have gone before them um, and see the various types of surgical options that are available to them. Um, development of decision aids and communication tools is something that is needed and we will be working on as well. But there are other things that are needed as well. We need a validated survey tool to better assess the patient experience. Um, because at least in my opinion, and it is just my opinion, but also that of many of the patient advocates, the survey tools that are currently used for patient reported outcomes do not accurately assess the experience of patients in this population of, of those who opt to go flat. And we also need, and this will take a little bit longer, but we also need an emphasis on aesthetic flat closure techniques during surgical training, both during general surgery residency, during breast surgical oncology fellowships, and also during plastic surgery uh, fellowship training. None of the surgeons that are involved in this procedure get a lot of training or experience with aesthetic flat closure, and in part due to the emphasis um, in recent years on reconstructive techniques. But that is something that, especially once we get a validated survey tool and more input from the patients, then that's something that we can push to help change some of the training programs so that women will be able to find surgeons that have experience and expertise in these techniques. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to thank FORCE, the entire team, for the invitation to speak. And if there are any questions we don't get to in the chat today, then I am readily available either by email or certainly you can find me on Twitter. Thank you.